trigger warning. So Zupa, I wonder, should you give this protocol a name? Uh, Zupa califragilistic. No, no. Um, so this was called clearing when I first learned it. That was when I first did this with you, we did the clearing method, mm -hmm. which is the Chinese medicine, five elements with kinesiology. Okay. Normally that was done as muscle testing. Let's yeah. pretend you're the practitioner. So you do it, you can do it on me. So Ooh, yeah. ask me, ask me a yes or no question and I'm going to like resist. Okay. So yes or no question. Do you think I'm the best? That means yes. Okay, cool. Um, try, okay. Try to trick me into a no question and we'll show them how my shoulder will yield, um, you know. Do you want to hurt people emotionally? <laughs> Say I'm not, did, if you saw my eyes, rewind it if you need to. I'm not really connected to it mentally. It's just like a physical response that kind of bypasses the brain. So it's like fight or flight response is not uh, monkey brain or prefrontal cortex. It's like lizard brain. So kind of bypassing the intelligent parts of the brain and just going to like fight or flight lizard brain is like run or fight or flee. You know, it's, uh, what's the other one? I'm not going to say the other. Flee, freeze. I'm not going to say the other F word on camera because Ooh. that would be inappropriate. All right, but, um, <laughs> well, let me ask you a question, Jess. Yep. How would you describe how you felt before and after doing sessions? Um, after General. the first session, I felt, well, you know, to say like a weight's been lifted, it was more like, it was like a weight was lifted, but it was also like, the entire way I saw the world had shifted. Mm -hmm. So the way I processed all the information coming in had shifted and it was no longer a threat. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so like less fear than less fear. Okay. Huge. And it's pretty similar for me. I remember when I did, it was the third and fourth session of the original one. So, um, the one I do now has more, emotional focus therapy and like empty chair techniques from gestalt therapy and a bit of compassion, uh, self-compassion therapy and stuff. So I've built on the system that I was taking through um, just because there were problems that arose and I found ways to solve them with my clients. But um, when I did session three and four, there was this moment I was walking across a train bridge, you know, over the train station and my heart was just like a blaze and I was just like, yes, I'm so happy to be alive. And I don't know if I ever yeah. felt like that. It was... It, yeah. it had been like locked up forever, the fear and stuff. And I was just yeah. like, I'm alive, like yeah. standing over the, the yeah. train and stuff. Yeah, was... That's incredible. When you've grown up, you know, in a traumatic kind of way, mm. you are just trying to survive, you know, so. Yeah. And I guess they've seen the change in me because I don't think I was very effective at really explaining what you've done which is a shame because about, I'd say about 70 to 80% of the people that I've really told about this and tried to recommend to do it, haven't done it. So. Mm. So the people saw the change in you and then. Well, yeah, the people could see the change in me kind mm. of. Yeah, the change, seeing the change in people profoundly, like I can see it very clearly that it's like, ah, they've shifted and people will say, it's taking the edge off they'll say something to that effect and it's, yeah you can see the, the the frown's gone and it's like oh it's like you can see the edge has been taken off it's yeah pretty, it's pretty cool it's like ah gotcha you know so many friends i've had that have gone to see psychologists and you know nothing's really worked and then i send them to you and they do say like my mate jimmy said far out i feel the change and he's mm. just said ah oh, got to get the money together and do the rest of the sessions. I've got to make it happen. <laughs> I'm like, focus on it, Jimmy. Get the money together. Bloody hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. They see him like wrestling some small child who's also a jujitsu teacher, mm -hmm. you know, to the ground or whatever. He's teaching them, by the way. He's not hurting them, right? But sometimes. They, <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. But they, they see you mm -hmm. and they think, uh, you know, can this guy help me? Like, mm -hmm. but the fact is, I think it's an unusual kind of person that pursues something like this and pieces everything together, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a special person. But I wouldn't necessarily expect someone to appear a certain way. Just say, okay, here's an example. You take your car to a mechanic, right? 
and you just want to go to the person that's going to fix your car and be the most effective and you don't necessarily factor in what the guy looks like or you know how they use language even though you speak quite well and speak very well but you don't factor that in remove the image of Zupa you might see on Facebook or Instagram and just focus on the p possible outcomes because I don't think he should have to change the things he posts or not wear some like thing that shows off his muscles sometimes or whatever it is like he's also a human being and that's what Facebook kind of portrays mm. and look it does take an unusual person to piece these things together like if you were to and this is the only psychologist I can think of sorry but you know if you were going to meet Freud what would you expect he was a genius in his time you know mm. incredible things but you wouldn't expect a normal kind of guy you know mm. thankfully Zupa you I don't know I, are you more normal than Freud I don't know what is normal but basically you're getting Zupa but you're also just getting the outcomes and I'd probably focus on that so what I'm hearing is you think I'm super weird and other people think I'm super weird <laughs> it's so unfortunate they call me and they say so wait is it the guy with like the that's wrestling that small child that you're asking me to go to see and I'm like yeah, yeah that's the guy don't worry about that mm -hmm. sorry to gesture at you then but don't worry about none that. taken none taken <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and look, I don't want to poo-poo people that just post nothing but high-quality sales content. But um, you know, I can't be, I can't be doing like I do post a lot of psychological stuff, and there's a whole series on um narcissism, like real narcissism and how to mm. actually treat it, not like garden variety narcissism, but actual narcissistic personality disorder. There's like nine videos on um a course I did on how to treat it and like the real thing you know mm. um so I do post stuff that's that's psychology heavy and that but um I also post memes and silly things and stuff like that because it can't just be sales you know like it, people hate that that people unfollow someone who's always selling something in that and like I do I unfollow people who are like hey buy my course buy my course buy my course buy my course I'm like no thank you unfollow you know so yeah, yeah I don't want to be that person either but um being a bit silly as well is just Oh, exactly. what social media is about you know it's, it's meant to be fun it's not meant to be yeah I, I heard a thing they said if someone just came up to you at a cocktail party and was like hey i sell blinds you should buy blinds off me you'd be like oh, okay and then social media is yeah. like that too like if you just go up to people and try to sell them something it's like we're just hanging out bro like calm down and stuff so exactly i think you got to be jovial as well you know yeah and though something else though you may discuss psychological topics in your posts and things like that I do want to reiterate to everyone that Zupa will actually investigate your own problems. It's fine to discuss narcissistic personality disorder or anything on Facebook in general terms. Mm -hmm. However, you do work on an individual basis, of course, as well. Because, you know, of course, my father had a personal has a personality disorder and you may post something about, what is it like... Or how people are over, what's it called? Diagnosing. De diagnosing that, which they are. But it doesn't mean that you can't see in me that I am someone that's grown up with that, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, so also, trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> so the profound um, change for me, like the moment that I noticed that um, the original system had worked was... Um, because I had a horrific fear of driving because, like, mum would scream at us if we talked when she was driving. And um, and I was never real good with money because my parents used to fight about money a lot. So I had this, like, aversion to driving and, and to money, right? And then um, one day I'm driving a car and I've got all this cash in my pocket because I was going to buy something off Facebook Marketplace. And I was like, wait a second, I've got all this money and I'm driving. That's something's changed you know it was really <laughs> obvious it was like oh like 30 years that this, these things have not been in my life and now they are like oh wow it was really a defining moment so um did you have any moment like that where you were like oh I, I know that I'm, I'm suddenly allowed to be or do something that I wasn't allowed to be or do before moment. Well, well definitely being employed by someone mm. I'd always been a busker I'd always been self-employed entirely because I feared that power discrepancy mm. and being abused 
And there was a shift, like I was able to be employed by Jerry, but also through being employed by Jerry, I realized I'm employed by someone that treats me better than I treat myself as an employee. Like when I was employed, I was out there busking. It was like sometimes zero or one degrees. It was 3 a.m. I was making money, but I was freezing my ass off and it was like, you know, 12 hours. And then I'm there with Jerry and... I'm being paid to have a cup of coffee, discuss music and get together recording sessions that are involving some of the top session musicians. Mm. And there's even that factor of no longer being alone anymore. I get to share experiences with a friend. Mm. And it was so beautiful. Big change, yeah. Like, massive. Yeah, I've seen people, you know, get married and start a family when they thought, you know, they weren't good enough to be loved and stuff. And it's like, oh, that's a big obvious change there. Or one of my mates is a comedian and he ended up doing a gig with Dave Hughes, like who's oh, like yeah. in the poster with another famous comedian. And you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. So mm. it's, it's quite amazing how, you know, you could put 10 weeks into this and then your life's completely changed. And, and I've seen people, they have one session, as you sort of said, it's like, Oh, after one session they noticed and one of my close friends, she stopped drinking like that. And it was only one, um, like test and acupressure meridian rub. It was only one thing, but it was like, oh my God, my whole life has just been this one thing. And it was, it was just gone yeah. like that. It's incredible. Um, like the way I view what you do and the way I've explained it to people is it's like reprogramming the brain. It's like mm. entirely rewiring the brain. Mm. And so the way you process the environment just mm. absolutely changes. Yeah, and you know, you said before, a lot of people have tried seeing a psychologist or whatever, like mm. that's a real masculine, scientific, logical, left-brained way of doing healing. And it's mm. partly like, because, you know, women haven't been part of that conversation until the last sort of 50 years and stuff. And now we're moving into more somatic therapies and stuff like that stuff like mm. this that's like to the emotional side of the brain and like going through the body and mm. bypassing the logical part of the brain but that really mechanistic logical mechanical scientific way of doing things is like this behavior we're going to punish it we're going to reward it and stuff it's very it's, oh, it's yeah. very robotic but yeah. to go straight to like oh anxiety is in my body here like every culture in the world has type chested anxiety mm. and it's not really a coincidence that we're rubbing around there to sort of relax the points that apparently are traditional in that sense but uh it's not that wild and crazy after after you look into it it's like oh this does actually make sense you know? oh yeah and like, that's the thing too with psychology like the amount of psychologists i've seen and the amount of times i've gone to someone i've told them what's happened you know like in my childhood like i went to one psychologist when i was 17 and i was suicidal and i said um my father's doing these things and my father doesn't love me and she said to me well that's something you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life and i was like great i, I was like well i'm not dealing with it um, and I guess it's going to kill me mm. or what's happening, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And they'd say, and how do you feel now? Like, uh, like I've just released all this stuff or something by talking about it. And it's like, I feel terrible. <laughs> I'm I have told you I'm crying while I'm telling you I feel worse. Yeah. It's bringing it up. It's just like, you know, mm. re-traumatizing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, talk therapy never really worked for me. You still talk about certain things, but you're able to then access and view it in a different way. You know, part of it, yes, it's in the muscles and in the organs and everything that you mm. massage, but you're taking something that's happened and then you talk about why are you grateful for this? What have you learned from this? Mm. How is it? affected the person you are today and there's always you know i'm great i'm the person i am today because of what i've been through mm. and so basically that's also part of it too mm. as opposed to just this happened to me i'm depressed mm. i'm gonna have to live with the fact that my father doesn't love me and to a certain extent i feel probably wants to destroy me mm. <laughs> you know? it's like how do you get over something like that Live with it the rest Do of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I live with it for the rest of your life. I know. Great. <laughs> oh.
Oh great. I'm fine now. <laughs> I'm happy. It's gonna be great. Looking forward to the rest of my life having to deal with this. <laughs> See now. I've got a new perspective, you know? <laughs>